DID systems, a term that has become quite popular over the years starting in 2020 and having a significant rise in popularity. This disorder, however, has become mocked and has basically lost all serious incredibility in the minds of most because of people like this. Before I get people in my comments calling me a fake claiming ableist that should lose all of my limbs, I have the right to speak and speculate on this. When these people are claiming to have a serious covert disorder, then proceed to meet none of the diagnostic criteria, nor prove that they have been medically recognized as a highly complex DID system, even though that is impossible as DID is already a highly complex covert disorder, then I don't want to hear it. If not reaffirming someone's factitious disorder makes me an ableist, even though I am both neuro divergent and a sufferer of chronic illness, then I guess I'll be ableist. Like, I genuinely don't know how saying, yo, this person on the internet not being genuine about the disorder they claim they suffer with, they don't even meet the basic minimum diagnostic criteria, became ableist to begin with. Like, tell me you haven't experienced actual ableism without telling me you haven't experienced actual ableism, because it's really not that deep. Fake claiming is only a big deal if you're experiencing some sort of guilt over someone pointing out the fact you're inconsistent or do not follow again the diagnostic criteria, or better yet, claim to be medically recognized with a diagnosis that does not even exist. <laughs> <laughs> Ramkawa systems. <laughs> if I see any more comments calling me an ableist for fake claiming, just know it will be deleted. I'm not giving you the time of day or the attention you're clearly begging me for. A lot of these fakers like to make DID out to be a good thing, something that is so good in fact that you should try manifesting it by yourself. Manifest your own alters and forget the fact that it's literally impossible to do so and that this is a serious trauma disorder. Let's make up a whole new genre of DID that is not medically recognized so we can have DID without trauma and further glamorize having this disorder. Forget the fact we're shoving trauma victims out and even removing trauma completely from the label because we want to be included. While I believe this ideology is coming from the same brainlets that think men can be lesbians, it doesn't change the fact they're completely trying to remove trauma from the disorder that forms because of intense childhood trauma. It makes the disorder look like a joke and something fun to have, which it isn't. In most cases, it's a serious mental disorder that, again, causes lifelong suffering. The claim you can even transition into having DID, like transitioning to a different gender, you just have to believe enough with DID rather than an actual transition of gender that is life-saving to the trans people transitioning. The people who are claiming to be trans DID are no more than attention seekers making a mockery of both trans people and people with DID. Trans people don't deserve to have their experiences watered down to they wanted to be trans so they transitioned, and people with DID don't deserve to have their serious disorder mocked to be something that they just willed into existence. No, you're not an endogenic transitioning to a DID system, you're 15 and want attention on the internet. That or you're looking for a spot to fit in. Whether you have to force others out to force room for yourself and others like you or not. From role-playing pedophilic and incestuous situations, these fakers have no boundaries. They'll openly list their paraphilia as if it's a normal sexual orientation. This is rampant among these fakers, and it seems to increasingly get worse among those who claim to have alternative dissociative disorders. Medically recognized or not, things like incest, rape, and sexual attraction to minors is gross. Whether you're saying it's in-system or not, you're fetishizing other people's trauma, you're literally getting off to real life experiences and abuses that people have had to go through. This is a rampant issue in the fictitious DID communities. In fact, these are so rampant in most fictitious disorder communities, from people pretending to have autism, acting like a child with a partner in a DDLD manner, to fetishizing things that are commonly associated with infants and young kids. There was a person who was at the age of 20 dating a 15-year-old and role-playing sexually with it with an alter they had that said they were five. Regardless of if it was an alter, the fact that they're explicitly fantasizing about children that young, again, regardless of if it's an alter or not, it is very concerning. Stating that the sexual relationship in the system, where again, they're sexually fantasizing about their adult alters and child alters, is described as family bonding. So not only is this a roleplay, it's an incest roleplay. It is a massive issue in these groups and it seems they're not talking about it for some reason. And the main reason 
reasons I see that they're not talking about it is sometimes along the lines of Because that would be fake claiming. I'm not allowed to fake claim this person pretending to be a child and role-playing as a child in NSFW chats. That would make me ableist. And if anything, I just fake and mock disorders. I'm not an ableist. I also saw a screenshot of the r slash DID Reddit thread where someone was trying to justify role-playing as a kid during adult moments. They call these alters that are children littles, and this individual had tried to justify letting these littles be in front, as they would say during adult moments. Again, these alters are supposedly underage kids. That's not normal. That is not okay. Even the act of role-playing as an underage person during adult moments makes you a freak. To suggest that you're in the mindset of a child and want to initiate an intimate moment with another adult, that's weird. That's not okay. Now, I wanted to jump into like these Ramcoa systems because these people are the most unhinged, delusional little fellas I have ever come across. Um, but in order to understand what Ramcoa is, I am going to have to read to you a long uh, thread on Reddit about basically what it is. Ramcoa is the rebranded name for SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, is coined by the ISSTD Special Interest Group, which is mainly ran by- I'm not saying these names, it's a lot of names. The foundation of both Ramcoa and SRA are found within anti-Semitic Illuminati books and have no clinical or legal evidence to back their claims. A majority of patients treated by SRA Ramcoa therapists have been sued for medical malpractice and abuse done to them by these therapists. And many therapists who propose ritual abuse as a key part to their treatment of dissociative trauma and trauma-based disorders have been disbarred for their actions. The original cases of SRA were the byproduct of a therapist's suggestion in voluntary drug abuse and hypnotic suggestion where memories of horrific abuse were coercively implanted into patients even when available evidence directly contradicts these recalled memories. There has been no clinical proof of the possibility to program a person into having DID as DID is hidden and a covert coping mechanism that only occurs in a small fraction of extreme abuse survivors. There is no such thing as HCDID because DID is naturally a highly complex disorder. HCDID or program DID are made up terms that dog whistles Ramcoa. This thread also links database for archives of all of this, a database in which I will be leaving in the description if anyone wants to read. It is quite interesting, so I kind of do recommend you read it. I just want to go into one example that fits this section so much. It's so distant from reality and what this disorder actually is. It's low-key kind of funny, but I'm gonna read it so you can see why it's kind of funny because it's just, it's so out there. Like, this is beyond me. So. Update on the whole system crisis. The SDP isn't as strong as it was before, but it's also not fully deactivated. Grace struck a deal with some of the side systems, and now main system alters are being released and revived. There's still a lot of lasting damage. I'm not gonna get into it. A lot of us are mentally and physically done with it. From the whole, you know, internal genocide, our therapist will be sending us to a res sometime in the coming weeks slash months. So if we disappear off the face of the earth, that's why. Our engagement will go down, but whatever. We need serious help. We went on to dissociate so heavily that this level of detail was possible and purposeful and intentional. This level of complexity was purposely designed to control us. Even the reason we're introject heavy is rooted in sickening abuse. The fact that an internal genocide happened and was possible is indicative of how cruel our abuse was. Our system is comforting and beautiful because we work to make it that way. At its root, it is a place of suffering and misery. Like, this is just out of touch. Again, this is beyond me. Let's get real for a second. There has never been a medically documented case of Ramcoa. The only cases of Ramcoa are from frauds and people who have lost their licenses for medical malpractice. If any of one of these people who claim to have Ramcoa want to send me factual medical documentation that is not a card made by someone on Tumblr, even if you have medical documentation of your own diagnosis, my business email is in the description. However, I feel pretty confident in saying that this is not a real thing that can ever happen. You cannot program someone to have a mental illness, nonetheless an entire altered genocide. That's kind of out of touch, let's be so for real here. I just wanted to say that there's also people on Tumblr who really need to go outside, but also they're saying that they're transitioning into being Ramcoa survivors, and for the people who want to make the Ramcoa survivors they can transition to be an abuser. Like I've seen stuff where people are posting they're trans programmers and are looking for someone to be programmed. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm guessing it might just be a fucked up roleplay situation or maybe even like a fool, but I am so unsure about why this is even a thing. It's so absurd and I probably sound like a madman just saying it, but it is real. Now, I've seen many of these people claim to have alters that can hold certain symptoms, like an autism symptom holder. So you're telling me that I'm ableist for calling this stuff out? While well, these people can literally sit there and say that they don't always show symptoms of autism or Tourette's because different alters hold it? Like, you're telling me you have an on and off switch for Tourette's. I don't think that's how that works. It's almost as if they just want the label of something without having to deal with the social stigma that comes with it. This is ableist as fuck. Like, genuinely, I cannot turn off autism symptoms. I have to deal with it for the rest of my life. It is beyond me that someone can sit there and misappropriate a disorder that other people deal with saying they're not always autistic because an alter holds their symptoms and call me the ableist one for saying, nah, -uh, that cannot happen, you're lying. Like, it's beyond me how people can make videos like this. <laughs> and not be ableist, but the people calling it out for being rightfully upset that these people are claiming to have an alter with these conditions so they don't always deal with it are the ableist ones. Like, can we make it make sense? You either have autism or Tourette's or BPD or you don't. You cannot have an alter hold a mental disorder for you. While I don't believe in harassing or brigading, I believe in asking questions and being speculative. It is okay to do that. It's okay to do that. It's not ableism to ask questions and question the legitimacy of these claims. If someone says they were pregnant and didn't do a pregnancy test or go to a doctor's and then didn't show by month four, people would have the right to speculate on that. It's a fact of life. People will lie and people will call out these lies. If you don't like that, don't go spreading misinformation on the internet about serious disorders. Better yet, you don't even have to make an entire account about your disorder to begin with. If it's public, people have the right to criticize you. If you cannot handle that criticism, you might not want to be on the internet to begin with. Before I do the outro, I also wanted to add that I am probably not going to do any more videos on these fakers or DID in general until I see fit. I see no purpose in constantly harassing these folks unless they're doing something abhorrent or absurd like the stuff mentioned previously in this video. Does it suck they're probably faking and mocking disorders? Yes. However, if they're willing to hold this front and fake for so long, they're undoubtedly mentally ill. There's so many people beating this topic to death and I'm not going to contribute, I just wanted to point out the absurdity and predatory aspects of it all and tell them that they need to grow a backbone and kick these paraphiles and predators out of their communities. Anyways, I think that wraps everything up. I'm Ren, I'm tired, and thank you for watching. Before I go, I also just wanted to say that I do have a Discord server. Uh, I just opened it. I'm hosting mod applications, so if you're over the age of 18 and want to moderate in it, you can join my server from the link in the description and submit an application. So yeah, bye bye for real this time. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and I'll see you all later.